Thank you very much, Imer. That was fantastic. I think that's everybody wanted to hear that. We we all know about the EMA now, and you've told us a lot more about what went on, and I think answered lots of people's questions. But there are still some questions coming in, lots of questions coming in. So maybe I might start off with those. Uh, maybe I'll start with a topical one from Francis Jacobs, uh, who's an IEA member. Um, Francis asks, the UK and other countries appear to support the idea of delay between the first and second doses of the Pfizer vaccine to accelerate vaccination of the population, in, and in the UK's case, for a long period of the 12 weeks. Um, uh, I just might join that Aidan O'Connor, who's with the EU Commission, he said, is there a risk in the UK approach in not giving a second dose in line with approval? And Francis' question concludes, how far advanced is the EMA's review of this idea? So this idea of the, of the, the time gap between the first and second vaccination. Yeah. So yeah, of course, this is a very topical question. Uh, it's been discussed uh, very widely across European and international circles. Um, we have to, the authorization that we give is based on the evidence in the file and the evidence in the file um, uh, allows us to recommend the uh, Pfizer vaccine uh, for an interval of uh, the first doses is uh, the second dose is 21 days after the first dose and in the case of the Moderna vaccine is 28 days. Now there is a bit of leeway around that that we've seen in the clinical trials but how much leeway has not been studied so there's still a lot of work to do to really be to be able to say definitively whether this will work or not. And we can only go on the basis of the, of the trials that have been done and the evidence in those trials. Okay. Thank you. Um, question from Naomi Leary in the Irish Times. Um, what political pressure did the EMA come under in December to speed up the approval process of the vaccine, of the Pfizer vaccine? Yeah. Um, so, uh, this is, of course, not the first time that I've been asked this question either. Um, uh, we are under intense pressure. It's not political pressure, it's pressure to serve the European citizens. So we're constantly thinking about how we can do better, how we can be more reactive, how we can speed up our processes. We, since the start of this pandemic, and I, and I can speak from, from the start of my tenure at EMA, we have been looking at ways to make, uh, uh, to take out the more bureaucratic aspects of our processes, to try and, and make sure that we have a, a, a robust scientific uh, process at the same time as eliminating things that might be unnecessary. So I, I can, I can, Firmly, uh, um, I can firmly confirm that we have the pressure that we have been under is pressure, our responsibility towards European citizens and not political pressure. Thanks. Um, move on to a question from Stephen Murphy, who's with the, I think, the Department of Health, our Department of Health. First of all, he says, Congratulations on retaining your accent. I've been away in many years, but we know where you're from. His question is, <laughs> Do you anticipate a re-engagement, or I might want to say an increased engagement, with global medicine agencies by the USA uh, under the new administration? Yeah, that, that again, that's a um, very interesting question. Um, I know I, I'll speak from my point, the point of view of being at WHO when uh, under the previous administration where um, I think many of you will be aware that uh, the um, uh, the, the US uh, stopped, uh, withdrew its support for WHO and uh, we were worried about the impact that would have on medicines regulation. I have to say that, that we have behind the scenes, we've continued to have very good scientific collaboration um, with uh, the US FDA. Um, and uh, because I think everybody's concerned about, uh, about the same things. Um, I do hope that the visibility, the international visibility and the need for international collaboration will be a feature of the new administration. Okay, good. Um, question from Bobby McDonough, who's a former Irish diplomat. And I guess he's just going back to one of the issues you raised in your speech about the difference maybe between emergency approval and um, conditional uh, marketing approval. Is, is there any suggestion that there were some corners might have been cut a little bit in emergency approval? Um, would you like to distinguish between those two in any way? So um, I think what 
I don't think it's a question of cutting corners. Um, the emergency use provisions are different provisions and they have they result in different legal obligations. And particularly in the context of the European system, they would have they would have resulted in different European European approaches. Um, I, I I am strongly, uh, I, I, I believe that all my fellow regulators across the world uh, have a strong commitment to ensure the safety, effectiveness and quality. Um, having emergency use or temporary use provisions allow them to do things slightly differently, to have a slightly different data package, which can help them to, um, uh, to work uh, quicker. Um, but um, I, I don't believe that corners have been cut in, in the evaluation. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. And the questions are, are continuing to come in. And I might remind uh, our audience just to add your affiliation. We do like to uh, emerge to understand where the question is coming from. And I'm going to give you a question now. And I don't know where the person is from. Michelle Hennessy asked the question. She says, we've heard from Pfizer that if a new strain of the virus shows resistance to vaccines, it can make a vaccine work in six weeks. We know about the, the, the new variants. Um, so would the company have to go through the th entire three-phase process or is there an expedited process for this situation? So uh, very good question. Um, we're working with Pfizer and with Moderna uh, precisely on how their vaccines would work in the, um, uh, to, uh, in the context of the new strains. Um, we're, we're, we're asking them to 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 study, but it, it it we hope we'll be able to do a very uh, adapted a pr process. They, they wouldn't have to go back to the 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 full uh, package. We'd be able to use a lot of what we had already. Okay, thank you. And I should say that Michelle is, of course, I should have known this is from the journal.ie. So that 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 was the, the question there. <clears throat> 